Welcome to the University of Hong Kong Masters of Journalism webinar. I'm Matt Walsh, director of the Master of Journalism program, and I'm here with several of my colleagues to present to you a one-hour look at our program that hopefully will inspire you to apply. The applications are open now, and the cutoff point is at the end of this month, so hopefully we'll receive yours soon. The zoom in you just saw from space landed here, Elliott Hall, our home, the second oldest building on campus. It looks like a classic old university building from the outside, and it is, but on the inside, modern methods, modern equipment, modern technology to, uh, to teach you about today's journalism marketplace and what it takes to succeed there. We've been here about 20 years. Our program was founded in 1999 by this woman. This is Ying Chan, our founder. She's since retired, but she and a small group of intrepid journalists knew that this part of the world needed top class journalism education. And she founded the Journalism and Media Studies Center in 1999. We admit 60 to 70 master's candidates every year. And we'll tell you more about who they are in a moment. They study for usually one year. Uh, our, our program is a year-long program, which is actually nine months. Beginning in September and running through the end of May, it's an intensive program. We do have a handful of students who attend part-time and stretch those classes out over two years. We have nine full-time faculty and 14 adjunct or part-time professors and visiting instructors, uh, uh, most of them still working journalists. I'll tell you a little bit more about the instructors in a moment. Why are we special? Well, we focus on journalism. We're not watered down by marketing or public relations or advertising. We're strictly focused on reporting. And, and I think that's, that's important. It's, uh, we're uh, appealing to people who are interested in becoming journalists, interested in becoming reporters. We have an international uh, student body, an international faculty, uh, and a program that competes with any around the world, uh, I'm proud to say. Uh, our, our vision is to cover the world from our unique location here in Asia's world city, Hong Kong. It's a special place to be. It's a crossroads of Asia and of the world. This is a map that you may have seen before. This circle here includes more than half the world's population. Hong Kong here is virtually right at the center of it, more than half the world's population. Uh, that puts us in a unique position to uh, tell uh, a plethora of stories that are happening virtually in our backyard. Uh, international commerce, and finance, shipping, international relations, covering China from a political or an economic standpoint, it's all right here. And it makes it a very exciting place to be. Not only is it a great place to study journalism and to do journalism, now is a great time to pursue journalism. Uh, Hong Kong has certainly been at the center of a lot of news events over the past uh, several months, as I'm sure you've noticed. Uh, fortunately, the, uh, the protests of last year seem to have calmed down to a large extent. Uh, but beyond that, uh, before that and after that, uh, as I mentioned, covering China, covering the crossroads of commerce here in Hong Kong is uh, a, a, a great reason to be here. It's, it's all happening now. Beyond what's right around us here in Hong Kong. It's a great time to be a journalist because truth matters. This is our new slogan. There's an assault on truth going on all over the world by individuals, by governments, by corporate entities trying to manipulate the facts and the truth of our world. Journalists are the first line of defense against those attempts to mislead people. Uh, and we're uh, trying very hard and we're very proud of our efforts to teach people to uh, tell the truth and show why it matters and show why facts are facts. Um, so uh, I hope you're inspired by that as much as we are. Our faculty who I'm, I've mentioned come from all over the place, uh, the United States, Canada, Japan, uh, Hong Kong, mainland China, uh, and we, our faculty draws 
uh, on their experience at some of the world's premier news organizations. Decades of experience at places like the Washington Post, CNN, the, the Wall Street Journal, uh, NBC, uh, Bloomberg, uh, and more and on and on. The, uh, the, we also have media scholars on our faculty who do uh, deep dive research into media matters, finding out uh, the, the effects of uh, media and journalism on our world and measuring it in quantifiable ways if, if you're interested in studying that. Who comes here to study? People from all over the place, people from all age groups, all around the world. All these countries have uh, people who've uh, at attended our program. Uh, in fact, a few more than this. Uh, the most recent class, who's halfway through their program right now, are 60% from mainland China, 25% from all around the world, 15% from here in Hong Kong. In the current class, uh, students from India, United States, Singapore, the UK, Canada, South Korea, France, Ukraine, Portugal, and Russia. And that's typical of every year here. We get quite an international mix, which is interesting for, uh, for the students, and it's interesting for us, too. Uh, you get to meet people from places that perhaps you hadn't met anyone from before. The conversations are lively, to say the least. Uh, the background of our graduates, uh, quite a few young people. 58% currently are people who've just completed their undergraduate work. They're fresh graduates. 14% uh, have had some journalism or media experience before. And 28% of our current class has come to us from other professions. That's a good thing, too. People who gain experience in a different field, but then want to bring that expertise into uh, their work in journalism are very valuable. Uh, so if, if you're mid-career or thinking about changing careers, well, you're not alone. We have plenty of people who do that. What will you learn? Well, we're uh, working very hard to make a well-rounded program to prepare you for what today's news organizations want and need from the people they hire. And that has changed quite a bit over the years. Uh, we've developed what we call a core focused curriculum where we, uh, we require you to take courses in three broad categories. Uh, reporting and writing, digital and data, and visual and audio. Uh, over the course of your degree, you'll take 10 courses altogether. Some are required, some are electives. Uh, the electives also partly fall under these categories too. So it, it, typically in your fall semester, you would take the required news reporting and writing class. You would take a course called Digital Journalism Principles and Tools, introducing you to uh, the, the, the technology and uh, how and why to apply it to today's news gathering and reporting, uh, and video news production. Uh, don't be intimidated by that. It's a course that's designed for people who don't really have experience shooting and editing video, but we feel that it's very important that if you don't know how to work with video, you're sort of journalistically illiterate in today's world. So we want to prepare all of our students for that. So these fundamental courses are required in your first semester. And you would have time to take one additional elective for four courses in the autumn. We have one more required course that comes in the spring, and that's media law and ethics. Obviously, it's important to know what defamation, slander, and libel are so you can avoid them and do a good job as a journalist and, and keep you and your organization out of, out of trouble. And uh, perhaps uh, more uh, uh, debatable questions of ethics. When is it OK to reveal a source? When is it OK to protect a source? Uh, th these kinds of things. So that's a required course that everyone takes in the spring. Now, uh, in addition to that, in the spring, you have a large menu of electives from which you can choose. Uh, and those elective courses fall within these categories as well. For instance, you must take one from each of those three broad umbrella categories. 
The reporting and writing category includes covering China, reporting global affairs. Perhaps you're interested in long form, magazine style, feature style writing. We have courses on that. In fact, that's offered in both the fall and the spring semester as an elective. Global financial journalism, interpreting and using business journalism in a global era. In the digital and data category, you can take any of these research methods for media studies, data journalism, digital media entrepreneurship, learning how to do a startup, social media analytics, what does social media use mean, uh, the, the, the way people use social media, what can we mine from that data, how can we tell data-based stories and, and bring them to life and visualize them for the, the public. Uh, and the visual, visual and audio uh, category includes a lot of interesting electives too. Documentary production, documentary appreciation, backpack journalism, working as a one-man band as it were. Everything that you need to collect a story, research a story, shoot a story, edit it, produce it, disseminate it out into the world fits in a backpack that you can take anywhere in the world. Uh, visual storytelling and motion graphics, uh, a, a sort of a part two of the visual uh, introduction that you'll get in the fall. How can you uh, use uh, software to make more visually interesting stories? Uh, podcasting and audio news, uh, uh, interesting to t uh, that podcasting has seen quite a resurgence in recent years and understanding what makes a good audio story, how is that different from other Storytelling is a part of what we get into. And here in this studio, from where I'm speaking to you, writing and producing for TV news. We cover really all aspects of uh, TV and studio-based news programs. So it's a, it, it's a, it's a great menu to choose from. Uh, you'll, you'll be required to take at least one elective from each of these three categories. So what do we have here? That's four required courses plus three uh, uh, electives from each of these categories. Uh, so that makes seven. You've got two electives that can come from anywhere, even from elsewhere uh, at the University of Hong Kong. A, a lot of the departments are open for you to pursue something else that interests you and make that part of your master's degree. Uh, and then there's one more uh, called the capstone project, sort of a final thesis, a summation uh, bringing together all the things that you've learned to tell one grand story. Uh, we leave the month of May empty of classes for you to finish off on that. It's something you'd be expected to be working on throughout your master's degree, certainly through the spring semester, uh, but then uh, polish it up and finish it off in May. And that equals 10 classes altogether, and that's your degree. Another part of your study here is internships. We don't require them. But many of our students uh, appreciate the opportunity to do an internship. Uh, many of them are in the break between the fall and the spring semester. It's about a six-week break, and we have internship partners uh, at many organizations here in Hong Kong and around the region. We send interns to Malaysia, to Myanmar, to Nepal, uh, mainland China, many Many uh, uh, cooperating partners are happy to receive our interns. Uh, some people do internships after they've completed their studies, do a summer internship before they begin a professional career. Uh, and the thing that I tell students often is that uh, an internship can lead to a job. If you make yourself invaluable to the organization you're interning with, uh, they might not want to lose you. And when your internship is over, they might offer you uh, an entry-level position to, uh, to keep helping them as you have been. So internships are very valuable, getting that look on the inside. Our classes can tell you a lot, but it's only when you see a news organization at work, in operation, that it all sort of comes together. So we encourage people to do internships, and we have uh, a person on staff here who is an internship coordinator and career counselor who can help you uh, make that step into an internship. After internships and after you've got your degree under your belt, 
employment is the next step, right? We understand that not everybody who completes their MJ, Masters of Journalism degree, will go into journalism, but we want to make sure you're prepared to do so. And a lot of our graduates do. The 2018 uh, graduates are 44% uh, working for news organizations, last we checked. Another 10% are freelancing. We presume that to be journalism, but they're not working specifically for an organization, but they're doing journalism for a number of organizations, most likely. So that's more than half. Uh, another 11% are working in media, uh, but not necessarily journalism. Uh, so that's a pretty good rate uh, of, of employment. Uh, News organizations here and around the region are very happy to get our graduates. Uh, we place them every year, or they place themselves, I should say. They, they, they work hard to get their jobs, and uh, uh, local news organizations, Asian news organizations, world news organizations are happy to receive them. Now, uh, I can't go through all the names uh, of our grads who are working here in Hong Kong, but the Hong Kong media, like the South China Morning Post, the main English, English language uh, uh, paper, now website here in Hong Kong, has plenty of them. Radio Television Hong Kong, the government uh, uh, broadcaster, uh, has uh, many of our uh, graduates. TVB is a uh, local commercial TV station, has our graduates. Initium Media is an online uh, outfit that hires our folks too. International names you'll surely recognize like the New York Times, like Bloomberg, the Wall Street Journal, Reuters, Associated Press, Agence France Press, all have uh, JMSC graduates working at this moment. Mainland Chinese outlets employ our graduates too. Uh, Phoenix TV, CCTV, Sixth Tone, BBC's Beijing Bureau has uh, uh, at least one of our people there these days. So uh, we've got uh, a pretty good track record. Uh, and. This could likely hold true for you after you finish our, your degree with us. I want to introduce you to one graduate who's done quite well, Natasha Khan. Uh, earned a degree here, did an internship, got hired at Bloomberg, and then parlayed her experience there into a job with uh, the Dow Jones News Wires and Wall Street Journal. When I was starting out and doing my MJ, uh, you know, I was still a really green reporter. Definitely loved talking to so many people, learning so many things at my day job. In the evenings when I would do, would go to school, it was really great to be in a classroom with teachers who were at the top of their craft, students who were really interested in learning, you know, just, just the same things that I did. It was really a great experience in order to learn what it means to be a journalist, but also a lot of the different skills required to be a journalist today. So I can't think of a more important time for there to be quality journalism out there globally. There is a lot of different data information that gets released that I think needs examination, needs a second look, and really needs interpretation to our, our readers, to the world on what's going on. As an alumni of the program, I still feel very connected to the JMSC community, and I'm very proud to see the program continue to thrive and produce such engaging, dedicated, and curious reporters. The JMSC really strengthened my resolve to pursue a career in financial journalism. I really believe that financial journalists are at a prime place to really understand how the world works by following the money. Hong Kong is such an important place to be doing that sort of work because with all the money coming in out of China, which is rising to be the biggest economy, biggest story of our time, it's been a privilege to really have the front seat to all of that happening. Because the JMSC has such a strong career program, they put me in touch with quite a lot of editors in town that were looking for good, keen candidates. And one of the editors I met was at Bloomberg, who ended up introducing me to my future boss, um, who headed up the health and pharmaceuticals team at Bloomberg. Because of the way the JMSC program was structured, I felt that I walked into the job at Bloomberg with a lot of different skills that was needed to really hit the ground running. From writing feature stories to understanding what it takes to do a com comprehensive fact check. You know, I think all of those things were very thoughtful from the point of view of JMSC to give us all the skills as graduates to go into the workplace and be able to do the best job we can from day one. I always found myself thinking back on some of the principles I learned at the school. You know, seek the truth, leave no stone unturned. What a journalist should be doing is 
taking together so many different themes and ideas that you're observing and tying that together for a reader to understand and really to digest the world in a more clear and thoughtful way. And I really believe that the way I thought about things started at JMSC in the classrooms at Elliott Hall, and I'm really grateful to the school for that. Natasha Khan, a graduate we're very proud of. We're proud of all of our graduates here. They've all gone on to do so many interesting and important things. Uh, we hope you'll join them. Uh, another fact, another feature of your experience here at the University of Hong Kong's Journalism and Media Studies Center is, well, we've, we've talked about classes, we've talked about internships, we've talked about pursuing work afterwards. Lots of uh, guest speakers come to see us every semester. Uh, in recent uh, times, we've heard from Tom Wright of the Wall Street Journal. You may be aware of the uh, one MDB, Malaysian uh, uh, Sovereign Wealth Fund scandal. He wrote a great book about it uh, called The Billion Dollar Whale. Tom wrote large parts of that book in his office here when he was a visiting professor. Uh, and he came and answered questions for, uh, for us uh, about a year ago. Uh, Ruby Yang is, of course, on our uh, faculty uh, teaching the documentary production course. She's an Oscar winner, uh, nominated for two other Academy Awards. You will get a chance to talk with Ruby, uh, whether you take her course or not. She's a, a, a leader in her field, and, and she's a, a, with us. Bai Yen Song came to see us, CCTV anchor and commentator. Uh, we uh, were, were pleased to see him, Christy Lou Stout from CNN here in Hong Kong, drops by about once a year to uh, do a presentation and answer questions from graduates and undergraduates. Um, I gotta be honest with you, it's hard work. Uh, uh, late nights, long days, uh, you'll work very hard for the nine months that you study for your degree, uh, but it, it's, it will be the most rewarding thing I think you'll ever do. Uh, it will change your life. If you study here and succeed in earning a Master's of Journalism degree from the University of Hong Kong, you will be different after that. You'll know things you never thought you'd knew. You'll have you, you'll know, things you never thought you'd know. You will have skills you never imagined that you'd have, and it will change the, the course of your life, the direction of your life. But in addition to hard work, we have a lot of fun, too. Uh, here's three of our students from a couple of years ago being goofy, because when you work very hard, you need to let loose. And uh, we're a pretty relaxed bunch around here, and we, we have a lot of laughs in addition to all the hard work. So what's the bottom line? How much does a great sounding program like this cost? I hear you asking. Well, significantly less than comparable programs in the US and UK. For, uh, to earn your degree, it would be about 25,000 and change US. That's just under 200,000 Hong Kong dollars for non-local students. Local students get a little bit of a break, 23,000 US or 180,000 Hong Kong dollars. Uh, really, literally a fraction of programs that you'll find uh, top rated programs in the US and the UK. 60 credits will complete the program. That's uh, six credits per course, 10 courses. Um, and again, most people will do that over the course of our nine month program. Some can uh, study part time. There are some scholarships available, but it's a bit premature to talk about that. What we prefer to do is see your application and uh, talk to you. And after you have been made an offer to join the program, then we can talk about any uh, financial assistance that might be available. Uh, I can't say that there's a lot available, but there is some from time to time. Now, important dates to remember. As I said at the outset, application cutoff date is the end of this month. So try to get yours in within the next three weeks, before the 31st of January. Those who are, uh, get past that first hurdle will then take a qualifying exam in mid-February. We haven't nailed the date down for that, but sometime in the middle of February, you would take an online exam. Then, after you pass that, 
you, we would do an interview with you, either face to face, if we're able to set that up, or uh, online by Skype or something like that. And those who get through all those uh, screening processes would receive an offer sometime in March. So I want to encourage you to visit our website to find out more about our program more about the courses that I briefly described to you before. There are full descriptions of every course we offer on the website. There are details about our professors, bios, and a lot of details about the program that is too, too much to fit into a short presentation like this. So visit us at www.jmsc.hku.hk. We have presence on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, and on YouTube and I hope you'll check out all of those to learn more about us and get your application in by the end of January. In a moment, we'll meet three of our current students. I'll ask them some questions about their experience here at the University of Hong Kong, and you can ask questions too by way of the chat room here online. Before we do that, I'd like to introduce the director of the Journalism and Media Studies Center, a 30-year veteran of the Washington Post, Professor Keith Richburg. Thanks, Matt, and thanks to all of you out there for uh, joining in on this webinar. Uh, you know, this is a really exciting time to be uh, a journalist or to be considering becoming a journalist. If you look around the world, this is a time of really dramatic change going on. It can be disconcerting at times, uh, but it can also be exciting to be a journalist. Uh, unfortunately, with all that change, there's a lot of fake news and disinformation and, and propaganda floating around. So what the world needs right now are two things, truth tellers and good storytellers. And here at Hong Kong U Journalism, we try to teach you to do both. Uh, we are very big on teaching you the tools that you would need to help combat uh, all the fake news that's floating around out there and how to tell really fact-based, uh, truth-grounded stories. And we train you to be good storytellers. And that's in all mediums, on all platforms. Written stories, video, data, photography. We teach everything here. So if you're considering a career in journalism or you want to know more about it, uh, please consider HKU Journalism. Uh, Matt and the team are going to explain more about it later and you'll hear from some of our alumni who are out there practicing and some current students. So, you know, uh, really this is one of the most exciting times I can think of to be a journalist uh, around the world and right here in Hong Kong. If you're interested in news, come study journalism right here where news is happening. Thanks, Keith. Well, now that you've heard a lot of details about the program, uh, I'd like to introduce you to three of our current Masters of Journalism candidates. They're one semester through the two-semester program, and uh, they'll share with you their personal experiences of what it's like to be a student here, and you can ask them questions, too, in the chat room. Um, and I'll ask them a, a, a few questions to start with. So uh, I'd like to introduce you to Katusha and Will and Michelle, but let's uh, let, let them introduce themselves uh, to start with. Katusha, uh, tell us uh, who you are, where you're from. Hi, my name is Katusha and I'm from the UK and I spent a few years in New York and now I'm in Hong Kong with everyone. Um, I'm Will, uh, I'm from the United States and uh, I went to school there and now I'm here. Hi. Hi everyone, Happy New Year. I'm Michelle and I'm from Singapore. I uh, studied in Singapore, I uh, worked before, I joined the program and um, we're happy to meet all of you today. All right. Um, um, now, uh, Katusha, you're from the UK. How did you come to, to find us here? What made you decide to uh, uh, attend our program? Right, so when I was in New York, I actually made a lot of friends who were in Hong from Hong Kong. And I joined the Hong Kong Students Association. And I found that a lot of the things that uh, my friends and I wanted to look into were to do with mental health in Asia. And I debated a lot about which countries and cities I should uh, consider living in. And I really wanted to try Hong Kong because it seems like a really good mix of East and West. And together with my background, I felt like it was the place I wanted to try living. Uh, I couldn't agree more. It is a crossroads kind of a yeah, city, really cross-cultural city. How about you, Will? What made you come here? Um, well, I had a boss um, back in Nebraska when I was working at a magazine, and uh, I really wanted to do international journalism, and there isn't a lot of opportunities for that necessarily in Nebraska. <laughs> and he recommended I look at Hong Kong. Um, 
because he had been there and he thought it was a really international city and he, he put this put this program on my radar. So that's how I found out about it. But the fact that it was a city where I know I know it's the cliche, it's the it's the East meets West. Um, for somebody who can only speak English, this felt like the perfect place to kind of break ground in international journalism. We'll talk about that language issue in a few minutes. But this is the first time I've heard your anecdote about the, uh, the uh, boss who recommended Hong Kong. Give me his contacts later so I can send him a thank you note for sending you our way. We really appreciate that. Michelle, how did you decide to come, come to Hong, Hong Kong and the JMSC? JMSC? So, like, for me, it was similar to what for, for Will's experience. I had a friend who did this program many years before, and she really enjoyed it. And she said, Michelle, you have to do this. And so I, I applied, and um, you know it's been it's met and exceeded all my expectations. It's an international um, curriculum. The faculty is outstanding. Um, the classmates are amazing. Mm -hmm. um, you get to interact with people from all over the world, and Hong Kong. It's a really livable city, um, and also it's a great place to watch what's happening in the region. It's close to China. It's Northeast Asia, Southeast Asia. And it's, it's really a fascinating time to study journalism um, here and at HKU. So. Indeed, Indeed, I couldn't agree more. Um, now, <clears throat> I think a lot of the, the folks who are watching uh, are wondering about uh, moving to Hong Kong if they're not from here. We, we do have people from all around who've, uh, who've joined us, four from Hong Kong, but uh, we have people from Canada, from Philadelphia in the United States, uh, uh, several people from the mainland in Beijing, Chengdu, Shanghai, Shenzhen, Xi'an, um, Oxford in the UK. Um, and uh, I think they're all wondering what it's like to move to Hong Kong and what it's like to begin our program. If you can cast your mind back six months to when you first arrived or five months um, and, and began the program. Uh, so I guess that's, that's two parts. What, what was it like landing in Hong Kong? And what's, what's it like starting the program? A lot of people talk about, wow, time management and how stressful the program can be, in addition to being enjoyable. Um, we start on the Katusha end again, and if you tell, remind us, or remind yourself what it was like then, and tell us about it. Sure, so when I first arrived, I, I'd briefly visited Hong Kong before for about you know, two, three days, so I'm not, that doesn't really count as living. But I realized that you can get around with English very easily. Uh, if you've ever visited any sort of, you know, um, mainland Chinese city, it also helps a lot because you realize that it does share a lot of qualities, uh, a lot of mainland Chinese cultural qualities, a lot of Asian co uh, cultural qualities, but also British qualities, which is what I grew up with. So for me, it was a, it was, it was a very interesting experience because I had visited mainland China before and lived there before, but not really lived in Hong Kong. So then I realized that it is a lot of the Asian cultural things that I'm used to, but also British culture. So that was very pleasant for me. It was very easy for me to assimilate. I actually arrived a little bit earlier than the program because I thought that it would be really helpful to get to know the city before we sort of dig into all the studies and classes and meeting the uh, classmates and teachers. As for the program, I really enjoyed it. I did not know exactly what to expect coming in. I, don't, I didn't really have a journalistic background, but I realized that uh, my background's in filmmaking, and it actually shared a lot of similarities in terms of what the requirements are for telling a story, because we are trying to tell a story just in a different way, with a different purpose. Um, yeah, so that's, in short, what it was like for me. That's very interesting. You will. What, what was it like coming to Hong Kong for you? Um, for me, it was definitely it was definitely an intimidating experience. Um, my only other time in Asia was uh, Jordan, so the Middle East, so very different. Um, so I basically got off the plane and was like, okay, I guess I'm I'm gonna live here now. <laughs> I'm gonna live in Asia, and um, I would say culture shock, obviously for. It only felt like a week. It was really, um, in terms of a city that I was like really shocked with how quickly I was able to um, just adapt. Uh, it really, I mean, it was amazing in that sense. Uh, and uh, like Katusha said, it really is somebody, I, I can only speak English. I mean, it's, it's an easy city 
to not only get around, but I, I was surprised at how easy it was to meet people and to um, you know, make, make connections that, that I'm using for stories and, and making friends. Um, it, I, I was worried that that was gonna be difficult, especially trying to do journalism. Uh, and in terms of the program, uh, when, I, uh, when I first got here, uh, definitely, like I said, my biggest concern was like, uh, well, my, my big concern is that I had a background in journalism and I was excited to be somewhere new um, but I was worried that it might be redundant at times, and I was pleasantly surprised that I complete in every class I had. I learned a lot more than I already uh, than I already knew, and they even um, the fact that uh, I was put into a different class uh, for writing that kind of already acknowledged that I had some of this writing background, like that was extremely useful for me. So um, even though I've worked in a magazine and everything, like being able to be a part of like a video course and stuff, everything, it's still been useful to me. Um, so yeah, that, that's my initial reaction with the program. Well, that's, that's our aim. As I explained a moment ago, we, we aim to send uh, students out from the program with a very well-rounded multi-platform uh, multi background so that uh, if you've got experience writing for a magazine as you do, well, you can branch out into doing other uh, uh, video things or audio things or, or multimedia website uh, building kinds of things. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy that, that you, you find that enriching so far. Now, Michelle, you're from Singapore. You're in our neighborhood here in East Asia. I assume you had uh, visited Hong Kong prior to moving here. Um, but how did you find uh, the, the adjustment uh, moving here to live? And uh, how, how did the start of the program go for you? So Singapore and Hong Kong, I think, are quite similar. Um, very urban, big cities. But I think the biggest shock to me was the rent. <laughs> the rent is really um, something that you have to consider uh, quite seriously when, when you spend some time in Hong Kong. Um, and the cost of living is also much higher than in Singapore. Um, so apart from that, um, the city is amazing. I'm a foodie, so I love to eat, explore restaurants, uh, places. Um, and, and Hong Kong has lots of restaurants, lots of museums, lots of very interesting neighborhoods that are like, you know, surprise you. So um, I've really enjoyed hiking also. So Hong Kong has been a, a great city to live in. Um, in terms of language, I speak English, Mandarin. Um, so it's really easy getting around the city with English, um, Mandarin. And I've um, picked up Cantonese also a little bit. I think um, it helps especially when we're interviewing local people for our assignments. So um, that's something I, I hope to continue to pursue. Um, and in terms of the program, uh, I think for me, I worked before and it was really hard to do, and I did not have journalism background. It was really difficult in the beginning to do video, to write um, a news piece, to um, look at digital journalism. It was an incredibly steep learning curve for me. But I, I, I think it's amazing how the school also, or the, 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 you know, the faculty, they, they pace you. They help you build this huge block of a foundation um, that that well you're going through it you're like oh no it's so tough but then at the end of the at the end of the day at the end of the semester it's amazing how much you know you look back and you see oh my god you know we've actually covered so much I've, I've learned so many new skills and these are skills that you will carry with you wherever you go so it's it's a happy feeling well, uh, Michelle you've mentioned several things that I would would uh, want to underscore uh, firstly, I, I agree with you, Hong Kong is a great place if you're a foodie. I've never met anyone from Singapore who was not a foodie, so I'm sure you're enjoying that. There's a lot of delicious things to eat here from all over Asia, in fact, all over the world. Uh, the international aspect of Hong Kong is represented not just in business and, and its population, but the food as well. Um, and it's not just an urban environment. There are great hikes uh, up into the hills that uh, you can get away from, from the hustle and bustle of the city on the weekends. Um, that's a, a great aspect, too. Um, <coughs> the language thing that you, you've, you've all mentioned, um, I think it's important uh, to underscore for our friends who are watching that uh, Hong Kong is officially a bilingual, a bilingual city, as Katusha mentioned, with its uh, uh, 
underpinnings in the UK, a former colonial uh, place, English is an official language along with Cantonese. Uh, and we uh, frequently get questions, uh, can I, do I have to speak Cantonese to live there and, and, and to work there? And uh, the answer is no, you don't. Uh, the more languages you, you speak, the more of the world opens up to you. But uh, Cantonese or any flavor of Chinese is not something you're going to be able to learn overnight. Um, uh, but it's, it's not necessary. It's a, it's a city that fully functions in English. Uh, and I, I think you all have, have found that to be true, yeah? Um, now, uh, you've, you've all just completed uh, internships. Uh, as, as I explained a moment ago, uh, between the fall and the spring semester is an opportunity to do a six-week internship. Uh, some students do them outside of Hong Kong. Many do them here in the city. Um, let's, let, let's hear what your experiences were. You've, you've just finished or are just finishing your internship. Uh, Katusha, how did, how did yours go? It went really well because I feel like a lot of the things that they teach you in the first semester, it's core curriculum. And I ended up using a lot of it. I did have a little bit of previous uh, experience with, well, uh, I had previous experience with video, but in my internship, they needed me to interview people, to search for people to interview, and then be sensitive because it's a health tech company that is trying to grow a community for caregivers. So I used all the skills that uh, we were taught in our reporting and writing, interviewing classes, and then also, uh, I think that with people who don't have a filmmaking background, the video news production class really helps because I needed to edit almost every single day. And yeah, and then <laughs> sometimes I did find myself, you know, Googling, oh, if I need to tweak this or I need to improve the quality of this, what should I do? But all the basics are covered in the classes and they ease you in. So yeah, I think overall it was a very positive experience. I made quite a few friends and everyone's really lovely. Will, how was your internship? Um, it was a it was a lot of fun. Uh, I was given I, I basically found a company that was sort of new to doing new stuff, but they had a lot of really talented uh, video editors. So I was able to take what I had been learning, um, like in Kevin's class and video news production, and then have a bunch of people help me out with uh, you know how can we, how can we sound to enhance this? How can we bring people further into the story? Um, and what I was basically covering was, uh, as some people watching my guess, uh, protests um, related coverage. There's, there's a lot of stories that aren't directly related um, you know, to people on the streets necessarily that, that I think are important to, uh, to share. So I was able to do that. Um, a huge plus was I was able to see the, the back end of how how digital stories uh, get big and how, how you share them in a way that is, is very tactical. Um, so it was, it was a nice fusion of being able to use, like being able to do video production while also learning how I would distribute content if I was ever working on the back end of a, of a company like that. And, and you found, uh, well, you tell me, did you find that the classes prepared you for, for jumping into that? Oh, absolutely. I was a, uh, I was kind of thrilled because I had talents that, um, th this was a pretty small company, so I had talents that they really, really needed in terms of putting together uh, sort of like video packages. Um, and then really their talents were helping me enhance them, and especially, especially with like post editing. Um, so yeah, I, I would say my, my video classes more than prepared me for, for what I needed to do. You know, that's something that uh, when people are uh, searching for an internship, uh, for the, the winter break. A, a lot of people are attracted by the big marquee names, uh, but uh, a lot of times working at a smaller outfit, as you did, gives you a chance to get your hands on more things and, and perhaps play a, a more significant role in such a short space of time. Uh, Michelle, uh, speaking of big mar marquee names, uh, well, you did your internship at one. Uh, where was that? So I did my, I did a six week um, winter break internship at CNN. So it's the number one global news brand, if I can just <laughs> fit that in. <laughs> so, so six weeks with them and you're already, you're already I'm putting so in the plug. <laughs> okay. well, but first, um, before, I, <laughs> before I talk about my experience, I just want to say that the school, um, we have a career counsellor, Stephanie, who um, I think put in a lot of effort to help all of us kind yes. of uh, help us uh, get into um, 
good internships. So, um, and the great thing about Hong Kong is that there are so many big media companies here, big news companies here, like you know CNN, Bloomberg, um, Reuters, SCMP, um, and it's um, and in addition to the um, smaller media players, it's it's a very fascinating um, media industry, especially compared to Singapore. Um, so um, the ex at, at, during the internship, I got to write. Um, I got my own bylines. I I've, I learned how to build stories in their content management system. I learned how to um, interview people. I, I learned how to research, you know, to find sources, to look at possible um, story ideas, to pitch. Um, I, I came into this program having zero knowledge about journalism, and I think it's just amazing that. After three months, um, our first semester, I could actually step into the CNN newsroom and be able to contribute, um, I think, in a, a relatively positive way and, and learn so much more as well. well that, that's fantastic. And, and you got something like half a dozen bylines, or roughly? Yeah, well, that's, that's impressive in just a six-week internship. And uh, Olga from Hong Kong uh, has written into the chat room with a question, which I think uh, dovetails with that nicely. Uh, she wants to know, uh, how is the experience different for people who don't come from a journalistic background uh, and want to do the program part-time? Um, you're all studying full-time, so I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how well you can address that. but. Without a, a, a strict journalism background, um, have you found the program um, terribly challenging or uh, terribly enlightening? What's, what's that like? Katusha, you don't have a journalism background, but filmmaking. Um, how has the introduction to journalism been for you? It's been really good because in the first semester, we take the core classes that really underscore the skills that you need to be a journalist or to enter. Uh, a career as a journalist and regardless of whether you want to go you know the strict reporting route at a newsroom or if you want to do something slightly different uh, they really help you because it's not skills that you only need as a journalist you need them in many industries so I think the filmmaking background did help me uh, with the video part of the course I knew some of the things but it was definitely not redundant like I definitely needed to take a lot of those classes to enhance the skills, to get a better grasp of the basics. So I feel as though I may have had a bit of a head start in terms of the video, but you know, when you're looking to interview people, you use a different set of skills, and I learned that. Will, I know that you, you, uh, you did have some journalism in your background before you got here, so I want to skip, skip over you for this, this question from Olga. But Michelle, you weren't doing any journalism before you came to us. Now you have six stories on CNN.com. Uh, how, how did that happen? So um, I had no writing experience for news. I had no video experience. I did not know digital journalism. Um, it is tough, uh, especially at the beginning. I mentioned it's a steep learning curve, but it is. It just gives you a rush. Actually, I, I really enjoy mm -hmm. just learning. All the basics. So the, the, you learn the basics here, but at the same time, they, it, you get a lot of practical assignments. So you build confidence. You know, every week you get an, a, a video assignment or a writing drill, and so you build that confidence and you build that expertise um, throughout the course. And um, if, even if your experience is different, like for me, my I studied business in for my undergrad. Um, it just adds to what you know about the world, about life, and it makes you a better journalist, I feel. It, so it don't see it as um, uh, something that is a, a, a difficulty or a challenge. It's, it's actually something to embrace. It gives you a different um, a skill or... Yeah, knowledge. absolutely. I, I think our, um, our intent here is to take people who, uh, who don't have a journalism background and tell them what what the journalistic mindset is about. It's uh, a different style of writing, a different style of thinking and seeking out stories. Um, and uh, while some people come to us mid-career, many of our students come in with no journalism in, the, uh, in their background. And so we're, we're used to that, and we're used to introducing them to that. And uh, it's, uh, it, it's an important skill. I, I think uh, you guys have mentioned that 
these skills are applicable outside journalism as well. We're, we're very happy when uh, people leave our program and go into journalism jobs. Uh, a moment ago, I, I, I showed a pie chart that, that said 44% of uh, the 2018 graduates were working for news organizations now, another uh, 10 or so percent were freelancing in journalism. And those are great numbers. But the skills you learn here, the communication skills, uh, the writing skills, uh, the, the time management skills, uh, and, and storytelling skills are applicable across so many different industries. Even if you're not reporting the news, uh, every uh, company has a need to communicate and do it clearly, and very often with video and digital tools. So uh, there's, there's a lot of broad benefit to be gained from, from doing the program. Um, another question from the sh chat room. Um, uh, Min Chen from Shenzhen uh, is asking of how the current social movement is affecting the program. Um, uh, I can certainly say a few things about that, but let's hear from you guys first. Um, it, it's uh, certainly the elephant in the room, and we couldn't uh, uh, not talk about it. Well, how, how have the, how's your experience been here through the protests of the past six months? As in terms of living in the city, I haven't felt as though it's affected my safety because where the protests are are usually published online. So if you want to, you can avoid them. Um, I would say in terms of the program, it didn't affect it up until the very end where we had to have a lot of the classes online. And I feel like the professors were all very understanding about it. And then they would extend deadlines when necessary, when they felt like it was the right thing to do. And if there was some sort of a question that you had, you could also meet them outside um, of the school if, uh, if you wanted to. And we had you know, video calls, Skype calls, and uh, they were, uh, the teachers were very easy to reach through instant messaging as well. So yes, it did affect uh, you know, the whole classroom setting towards the last couple of weeks, but we still got through the curriculum and we still met uh, and ticked all the boxes. Will, how was your experience? Um, I mean, I would say, first of all, like I did get calls from concerned family members and stuff worried about like safety. Um, I never felt like I was in any danger uh, really at all. Um, so, I mean, there's that in terms of, in terms of safety. Uh, I mean, obviously, like Katusha mentioned, classes, like in-person classes did get shut down towards the very end of the semester. But I mean, we continued to get our assignments, we continued to work. And the city was still, we were able to travel around and find stories still. So it wasn't like, it wasn't like I was trapped in my apartment and it wasn't like I wasn't able to continue uh, progressing and, and getting work done. And I mean, we are in a journalism program. And like I said, like while we, we really weren't around, I mean, people shouldn't have been around, uh, you know, clashes and stuff, there were, this is a good time, or it was an interesting time politically um, to, to speak with people and, and to, to find stories that I think you typically wouldn't find. So um, if, there's, if there's an upside to the situation, I, I think I have some real gems in my portfolio now. So. As Professor Richberg said a moment ago, it's, uh, uh, it's great to study journalism in a place where news happens. Um, uh, how did it go for you, Michelle? Um, so I share the same experience as Katusha, you know, um, I never at one point felt my safety was um, uh, being compromised. Um, you have a, a schedule that you publish, so you know if you want to avoid this, the protest to not go to certain places. Um, I guess one of the inconveniences was when the school kind of was um, suspended, classes were suspended earlier. Um, and. Um, I mean, for me personally, I've really enjoyed being in the city during the protest because I've got to met, meet so many um, locals as well as people who are not, you know, locals, um, and and to learn more about how they see this protest, that you know, Hong Kong's future or the hi or the city's history. I, I've learned so much more um, during this point of time, and and it's just it's just like being in the action. You you see a very different um, side of of the city and um, it's just embracing it as you go along. I mean, protests happen everywhere these days. So. Well, yeah, that, that, that's, <laughs> that's certainly true. Um, I think that people who've been watching it from outside Hong Kong on the news, as many of you may have been, um, may have gotten an impression that's different from 
uh, our, our impression living here. Um, the news cameras will always go to where there, there may be some uh, compelling pictures, uh, uh, perhaps unfortunately violent, um, but that's not everywhere and it is uh, very, very isolated. And as the, our three students here have, have said, and I would underscore, you always know where it's going to be, uh, or, or at least most of the time, you know where it's going to be and you know where not to go. Uh, my own personal experience has been that I have found it very easy to avoid those, uh, th those areas where, where, where it might not be uh, uh, comfortable to be. Uh, and uh, I, I had no problems from the protests either. I've lived here 20 years and m my life wasn't really disrupted. So um, uh, it's also calmed down quite a bit. Um, journalists are not in the business of predicting the future. Um, so it, it's, it's impossible to say what is going to happen over the course of the next six months, but uh, the, the, the state of affairs right now is that things have uh, calmed down quite a bit. Um, uh, Min Chen, who uh, wrote in from Shenzhen with that question just now, follows up with a question for you guys about how much, <laughs> and this is something I wanted to get into also, how much free time do you have as a full-time student? Um, zero. No, no, really. What, what free time? What's that? Yeah. Um, well, what, what, to uh, to continue on from Minchun's question, I, I I was going to ask you also about time management. That's the thing that a lot of our students uh, say is is crucial to success here. Is is getting getting your head around uh, efficient time management. Um, was that you was. How did that go for you? Well, I would say that it's, it's easy to be uh, misled after the first week because the first week, I think the professors are quite lenient and you think, oh, you know, it's going to be fine. But then afterwards, you get, a, you get quite a steep curve in terms of the amount of work that you get, especially after the midterms. And I think that organization really is key and not procrastinating the work that you have. It's similar to, it's kind, it's kind of like having a full-time job, but you have to spend those hours doing the work and going to the classes. I would say that for me, one of the tough things was trying to make the most of what the university has to offer because it offers so much. I've luckily managed to go to a number of events and talks by uh, guest lecturers, and that was wonderful. But it is definitely to do with preparation, organization, and having a calendar to note out, OK, I have this class on Mondays. I'm going to do the assignment on this day and then give it in on the next day. And as long as, I think, as long as you are organized, it's OK. Will, free time? Um, Does it exist? I, I would say any time I, I take a lot of personal time, I end up paying for it later. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had a classmate notice I turned in an assignment at 6 a.m. one time. So video <laughs> editing wise, yeah. Um, no, there isn't, th there will be downtime um, in between projects, I would say briefly, don't, uh, don't indulge too much or you know, 6 a.m. turn ins. Um, yeah, it's you after the first couple weeks are going to be running around a lot. And, and I think people, I think that's a lot of the students in the program, though. I mean, you can try to slap a story together if you want, not put that much effort in. But really, if you're trying to get the most out of the program, you're going to be spending most of your time finding sources, interviewing sources, piecing stories together. Michelle, has this been your experience as well? Well, Minchen, you've asked a very good question. It's a very intense program. But you're going to have free time if you, as my, my classmates have said, manage and organize your calendar and keep up with classes and your readings. It's actually manageable. And just, I, I think yeah. so. And learning, learning time, time management is an important thing for uh, anyone's future as well, is, is being efficient with, with, with how to get things done. Um, we're, we're nearly out of time, but uh, I want to I wanna ask uh, you guys one more question, uh, if we can uh, wrap up on an upbeat note. What, uh, if, if you could name a single aspect of your experience here and, or of the program, what have you found most enjoyable about your uh, semester at the JMSC? Katusha? I would say how flexible and easy to connect, to connect with the teachers it has been. Because 
I think the size of the program facilitates that. When we have a problem or an issue, we can easily reach out to a teacher and they might make an adjustment. And if the class is very big, it's kind of difficult to do that. But here it really feels like, regardless of where we're coming from, what our uh, thoughts are, we are being heard. And I feel like that's very important, especially for people who are not from Hong Kong and this may not be their home. Will, what, what have you enjoyed the most? Um, I would say the willingness of, of everyone around me to, to help out and, and help me better myself as a journalist. Um, and this goes for, for faculty and for classmates. Um, I had, I mean, I remember I stepped into a professor's office one day because I was, I was going to go to an event and I, I wanted to get something published. And we sat down just off the cuff and for like 45 minutes tried to find places to, to get published. Um, and, and just recently a classmate uh, helped me get a freelance gig for, um, for a newspaper in Nepal. So it's just no one has ever hesitated to help me out. And I, I think that's probably been one of the best, best parts about being part of the program. We're happy to hear that. How about you, Michelle? It's the same. It's about, all about people. The teachers here are very experienced, very knowledgeable, and they're going to help you out um, all the way. And you're going to meet amazing classmates from all over the world who have wonderful stories to share with you and you have so much to learn from. So it's, that's what I've really enjoyed about the program. Speaking, Speaking of, of students, students from all over the world, we have an online question coming in from Ainsworth in Kingston, Jamaica. Um, any recommendations for student accommodation? I don't think we're giving out uh, landlord phone numbers here, but uh, housing is an issue in Hong Kong. You guys mentioned uh, it uh, briefly before. Uh, we, we do have uh, an organization on campus that uh, can help liaise with incoming students to find places to live. Uh, housing is uh, small, spaces are small in Hong Kong. Is, is there any comments you, you guys can, can make on finding a place to live? Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. I think if possible, and if the apartments are available, then definitely try to live on the west side of um, Hong Kong Island, because that is much closer to the campus. It's much easier to get to. If you need to walk, you can walk. You can take the, um, the trains. So for convenience sake and time sake, it's easier to live near campus. I think most of us live around like, like school, like HKU, Saing yeah. yeah. Pu, and Kennedy Town. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would just emphasize doing research. research. Um, I think it's really easy. There's a lot of people looking to sell a student, uh, to get a student an overpriced lease. So as long as you know just beforehand uh, what kind of your cutoff is and what's a reasonable cutoff, I, th I think you'll have a lot, lot easier of a time. Yes, Ainsworth, we, we, can, we can give you advice on that when you, when you come. Um, uh, obviously, uh, accommodation is, uh, is, is vital. Uh, but everybody needs it uh, and everybody finds it. Uh, we, we don't have any uh, students sleeping in the hallways, so uh, there's, there will be a place for you to stay. Uh, and we look forward to you coming from Kingston, Jamaica. I, I'm get, I think when you get here, that would be our first student from Jamaica. I, I can't be 100% sure, but I, I hope you'll imp, uh, apply, Ainsworth, and we look forward to receiving your materials. And uh, everyone who's watching, Thank you for joining us. Uh, I want to uh, roll credits here for a moment and thank uh, the uh, control room director, uh, Galak Koo, uh, Jennifer Wong for uh, handling your questions online, Jason Hoy, who you will be corresponding with as you uh, send in your application uh, materials. Uh, Lee Chen is in the control room, as well as Foon Lee and Horace Lee, all uh, helping to put this on, uh, video and TV like this. Uh, is a team sport, so uh, while you can see me and our students, there's a lot of people behind the scenes working in uh, our, our thanks to them. And I want to thank Katusha and Will and Michelle for spending some time with us, and uh, most of all, uh, thanks to you for watching. Remember, deadline for applications is at the end of January, and uh, we look forward to receiving yours, and we look forward to seeing you here in September of 2020. Thank you. So I'd like to introduce you to uh, three of our recent students. 
um, Supriya, Jack, and Xiaoyu. Um, welcome to all of you. Thank you for, for taking some time out uh, this evening, Hong Kong time, to, uh, to share with us some of your experiences. If, if I can ask you each to introduce yourself and where you're from and uh, where you're working now, if, if, if you're working. Supriya, can we start with you? Thanks, Matt, for inviting. Uh, so my name is Supriya Batra, and I'm right now working with Bloomberg as a digital news editor. I just finished the master's in 2019, that is this year in May. Uh, my name is Jack, I'm from Hong Kong, and I'm working at the SCMP as an intern because I'm a current student of the MJ program. My name is Wang Xiaoyu, and I graduated in 2017, and I'm working at South China Morning Post, so I'm mainly focused on the covering the trending videos on Chinese social media and some package of social issues. Thank you all three. So um, we're, uh, I think that uh, I speak for everyone who's, who, who's watching, uh, that uh, they've, they've had enough of listening to me. They'd, they'd like to hear what it's really like to be a student here. Um, if I can ask all three of you the same question, if you can, can describe what your first semester was like. You, you, you passed the admissions uh, tests and you were accepted and you, you began the program. Um, what, what can you recall of your thoughts at that time, Supriya? So I came last year in August and got lucky, got a good scholarship here to study. But I never expected the program to be this intense, to be honest. So the first semester came like a blow, and especially the video classes, I would say. But the amount of learning that I had in that six months or less was immense. And the professors are just out of the world. Their knowledge is something I have never, ever seen in any of my education before. So I would definitely recommend anyone who's uh, watching this right now that uh, even with a journalism background before, so I worked with, worked, uh, with PTI in India before coming here for about three and a half years. And even with that experience, I would say there's lots to learn. And the course will open you to a new wave of opportunities that you might not be even knowing about. Thank you, Supriya. Uh, Jack? Well, uh, same as Supriya said, it's a very stressful period. <laughs> but then it's a very rewarding period because it's, there's so much learning condensed into a span of a few months in the first semester. And uh, people tend to, say, underestimate reporting and writing because, well, everybody knows how to write, at least, you know. Uh, but then it's, it's not simply writing, but also writing concisely and crafting every single word to fit into limited space in the copyright. So it's not only about exercising what we already know, but to learn things in, in, in a journalistic way, is to think like a journalist, to find new stories, and to communicate better with our readers. So that's what uh, I found most rewarding. And, but, but it's really stressful. It's really stressful. But uh, you, you like it. <laughs> that's the message. <laughs> Well, well, Jack still has one semester of stress to go. We wish you luck with that, Jack. Uh, Xiaoyu, what do you remember of, of being a, a first semester student at the JMSC? It's like very challenging and very intense because I remember I've been rejected by you several times of like pitching the, for the video news production. Yeah, so, but I think this course is uh, because for me, I think journalism should is really practical compared with other major. So I, th uh, I think you need to learn at least the basic skills of the editing and the writing skills, but it's more about practice and experience. So I think this program has a really balance of both of it. I, I think that's uh, a valuable point for everyone to, to note that when you get your MJ degree, you're not um, a, a fully polished uh, finished product yet. What you are is ready to start to begin to be a, a journalist and gain that experience that, that you refer to. Um, let, me, let me ask you this. Um, you're all fluent English speakers, but perhaps not native English speakers. Uh, how did you find the, the, uh, 
the, the challenge of, of working in a fully English program. Xiaoyu, we start with you. Uh, yeah. a, a, a Putonghua speaker, Mandarin yeah, speaker. Right. So it's super hard and also like when you go out to inter for interview like most local people but I think for many students like you can come maybe you can understand Cantonese like mostly but you can still like communicate with some of the local people seeing like in Mandarin and also uh, if talking about like writing in English, I mean, of course, it, because I'm not native speaker, but it's, I think for me, of course, it's challenge, but it's more about the story, uh, the idea itself and how to tell the story. I mean, f maybe, uh, of course, you can be perfect in English, but you shouldn't just be so like frustrated of your like weakness. So I think if you can just do much better on pitching a story, much nicer and also tell the story. I think that's something you can focus on. So Priya, what, what are your, your feelings in working in a, a largely Cantonese speaking city without Cantonese skills? Yeah, that was the question when I was coming here. Uh, many people were asking like, how will you function without the language? And for the video class especially, I thought like it will be tough to find the right story characters and how will I communicate with them? But I feel, uh, I agree with her point that once you have the story idea, things will work out. There will be professors to help you with the language. There will be your classmates who will guide you how to go about it. And if nothing, if you have the correct story idea, even the people, the locals here are uh, extremely helpful, I would say. Once you have the idea, they will do anything and everything to make it work. But it gets stressful uh, during the production. I think language is not that big of a problem if you know what, what kind of a story you're looking for and what actually you want to shoot, how you want to do it. I think language, anyone can translate it for you. It's worth noting, too, that Hong Kong is a, a multilingual city. Uh, English is an official language in Hong Kong, and you can get pretty far speaking English only. Uh, perhaps it doesn't open every door, but uh, you're, you're not cut off from the city if you don't speak uh, Cantonese, Chinese. Um, what, uh, uh, what did you find most uh, rewarding about the program? Uh, or what did, uh, maybe I'll put that a different way. What, what did you find prepared you best for the, the workplace? Um, shall you? Uh, because I am working uh, mostly uh, with mostly with video now, so I may just share some of the related experience. So, for example, video news production. So I think it really helps my daily work. First, the basic skills of the editing and filming, like how to use the gear and how to film and edit in sequence. I think all these fundamental skills you're definitely going to use if you want to work in this industry. And so if you're a newbie, then it's totally fine because they will literally teach you everything from scratch. And, but more than that, of course. So the second thing I've learned, I think, is about the logic and the structure of this story, like how to tell the story. It's like if you are doing um, a short video, how can you just tell the story within like one or two minutes? Like how to select all the key elements from the very long text background. And if you're doing a much longer one, like a package for some social issues, then what kind of background information you need to offer and how to lead your story and how to still keep audience attention. So I think that's something I've learned from the program. And uh, what's more is something maybe sounds a little bit vague. It's about a sense of the nice story because that's what we're facing every day. Like every morning your boss will come to you like, hey, what, uh, what we are doing every day. So I think from here, after I've been, uh, after I tried pitching several times and being rejected several times, you kind of get a sense of what is a good story should be like. That is part of the, uh, the, the process here, it's being able to uh, uh, sense what a, a good story is, as you say, but also uh, dealing with criticism in a graceful way. Mm -hmm. that's, that, that's part of what we, we, we try to teach people because there's, there's isn't anyone in the, the journalism world who doesn't get edited, who doesn't get their, their pitch criticized or refined, shall we say, if that's a p polite way to put it. Um, 
it's just something you have to accept and, and do it with politeness and, and grace. Um, uh, Jack, you're, um, uh, I know you're not employed per se. Um, in your internship at the South China Morning Post uh, right now, ha ha what about your classes so far uh, uh, have you found useful in what you're doing? I think the most uh, useful thing that I've learned is, again, the, the feeling that the, the idea that you have to solve the problem and take the punches. Uh, our instructor for video and news production, Kevin Seitz, said it best. You have to put the problem solving first, then you can attribute the blame if needed. Right? So you have to balance different things. You have to work with people. The news industry is less about individual work than um, collaboration now. So uh, you also have to learn how to deal with people of different backgrounds. You have to work with them. You have to communicate with them. That's why I learned JMSE, because the backgrounds of the students and staff are also very diverse. And uh, another thing that I've learned from JMSE is the technology, actually, because newsrooms now are using so much technology that people outside of the news industry might not be using, such as um, instant messaging software, uh, social media analytics, uh, SEO. These are all fundamentals of news industry now, right now, given the internet is being used by so many. And, and you're finding that the, the classes you're taking here are exposing you to this and, and preparing you. Yeah. That's, that's terrific. Uh, so Priya, how about uh, what, um, what, did, what has been useful? I know you just started your position at Bloomberg a, a few weeks ago, but uh, what have you found that you took away from the JMSC that prepared you for the challenges of your new job? So I came here with an expectation of learning new digital techniques. Uh, as I was already into print. So the major takeaway for, for me was learning about all about the digital mediums and that's what I'm, I'm working now as. So I think everything that I learned is being put to use. For example, editing videos, how to make a podcast. I know it all by myself. So uh, one thing great about JMSC is that it prepares you to do everything on your own but also wants you to do things collaboratively. So you don't have pro problems doing both. And every news organization, as Jack said, wants you to collaborate with people. So I think for me, uh, the digital platform learnings such as how to edit videos, make podcasts, and uh, handle all the social media things, along with the writing skills, I would say uh, JMSC has helped me improve my writing to a great extent. A lot of my even class assignments got published, which I never thought would be. And uh, yeah, I think the internships between the program are a great help as well, not just the classes, because then you step out of the classroom and you take a head into the newsroom and see what's, what's being put to use, what you gain from the classroom, whether it's useful or whether it's just obsolete. You touched, you touched on a, an excellent point that uh, working with instructors here, uh, uh, students who are still currently attending classes uh, uh, will often get uh, pieces published, things that they did as a homework assignment, maybe with a little bit of uh, tweaking, a little bit of refinement uh, through our connections at the JMSC with publishing partners uh, on a variety of platforms, uh, see their work published and, and viewed by the entire world, potentially, uh, and, and that's, that's what we aim for, and that's a, a great step forward, and it's a great addition to your portfolio uh, if you can get, get the work that you're doing here uh, published. Well, that's, that's a byline, and that's what everybody, everybody seeks. Um, how about, um, in your experience here, what, what did you find most challenging? Well, uh, I, I know that's, some t for some people, that's code for wh what did you dislike about the program. And I don't really mean that. But you, you take it any direction you want. But what was the hardest thing? Because I know it's a hard program. It's, it's condensed in a short space of time. Jack said before, stressful. Um, uh, what, what was the uh, maybe a more specific challenging element of the program? Xiaoyu? 
Um, for me, I think, first of all, I love video news production, but for me, it's very challenging and very stressful for me because I, I remember when I, uh, so my final, ex uh, final assignment for this program, uh, for this course is to about uh, fading traditional handicrafts in Hong Kong. So it's really far like in Yunlong. So I just carry the gear my own and the tripod and the camera and to just um, after a long journey into Yunlong to just interview the the ladies and so for that experience like that's the first time I realized as a journalist it always happens as like being working alone because so when you're working normally like maybe your, your boss will just say hey just go to Shenzhen tomorrow to film something I mean that's a fr because the previous experience I was with my teammates and we all like help each other that's my first experience to like film alone that makes me feel like not dislike, but the first time made me realize of some like a bit like the cruelness of being a journalist. <laughs> it's hard work. There's there's no doubt about it. That being being a journalist is hard work. And when there's gear involved and you're on your own, it it certainly is uh, tough. On a hot day, or if it's pouring rain, as it often is in Hong Kong, uh, it, it can be tough. But l let me ask you. It, it's not my in, my intention to. Uh, embarrass you, but uh, prior to taking that video course, did you have any experience in video before? I don't have any. I, I was in the team of the video news production, but I wasn't like the editing one. I was the anchor when I was in college, so yeah. But shooting and editing? <laughs> Not shooting or editing. So that's my really first experience here too. Oh, oh, okay, about video then, then uh, I, know, I know you're a very modest person, but I, I, we, we like to highlight uh, our, our graduates' successes when we can. So can, can we talk a little bit about mm -hmm. your experience at the, the SCMP, the South China Morning Post? Mm -hmm. um, how many views have your videos oh. received? I think some uh, some of the videos, like for a single video, some can get like over 30 million views on Facebook. Th 30 million? Yeah, right. Okay, well, um, that's, that's what you can do when you apply yourself at the JMSC. Um, uh, Jack, what, um, I know you've only been through half of it, but what has been uh, the most challenging. I, I don't want to say dislike. I don't think you dislike our program. No. But what's, what's been tough? Well, I think uh, it's the consensus that video news production is tough. I think most people don't realize how much work you need to put into news uh, when you watch it or when you read it. Yeah. You have to find a story idea, you find the angle, pitch it, get rejected, re-pitch, and then do a pre-interview, uh, interview, shoot it, and then edit it, and then, then it goes to production. So even as news junkies, I think we all are, we tend to underestimate the effort that we need to put in news. But one thing that GMSC taught me is that you have to be working on something every single second. You cannot waste your time on, you know, um, I don't know, something not related to news production when you're on the job. Well, the, the, the semester's uh, coursework certainly simulates what r reporters go through in the newsroom because it's a rare time that a reporter is only working on one story. So the idea that you're working on assignments for four, even five classes simultaneously is very much like the work experience that, that you'll move on to after getting your degree. So Priya, how about you? What, what, was, what was the most challenging thing about the program for you? I think juggling the assignments, the point that you just made, like it taught me a lot of time management. Initially, even with some experience of journalism and you know seeing that deadline pressure environment, even then I used to think like this much of work I have never done in my life before. But I think it became better after some days. It took me some time to understand the pace of work that was demanded by the course. But uh, overall I would say the thing that I dislike about it is that it ended so soon. <laughs> and now I miss it. <laughs> oh, well, that's, that, that's sweet. Thank you, Supriya. Um, yeah, time management uh, skills are, are, uh, are a challenge for some of us. And uh, this program uh, is, is very much a sink or swim experience in terms of that. Because if you don't manage your time wisely, the, uh, 
the tsunami of assignments will overwhelm you, and uh, it's, uh, it is sink or swim. Um, uh, let me, uh, you know, video productions like this don't happen without a, a whole behind the scenes team. So if, if I may uh, speak to my colleagues in the control room for a moment, uh, do we have any questions coming in uh, over the, uh, the, the, the chat page uh, in our webinar? Um, okay, and where's, where does that question come from? Ian from Mexico wants to know whether um, uh, on top of your uh, work as an undergraduate, uh, what, what specialized uh, uh, skills has, has the, your MJ work added? Uh, and and uh, uh, I think Ian would like to know what your, what your undergraduate pursuits were. What, what, what did you get a degree in? Supriya, what did you do as an undergrad? So I did a bachelor's in English literature from Delhi University. And then I also have a postgraduate diploma in journalism from India. But this course will teach you some journalism, digital journalism skills, which I don't think any undergraduate course anywhere teaches. So yeah. OK. Uh, Jack? Yeah, um, I did law in HKU and also King's College London. So I had no journalistic education at all. But um, journalism is a skill. It's not an area of knowledge. So having another separate area of knowledge would be beneficial if you want to pursue a journalistic career. That's a very good point. I'll follow up on that in a second. Xiaoyu, your undergraduate uh, work was in media, yeah? Yeah. I, I majored in journalism when I was in college. Yeah. But it's mostly in Chinese, like covering stories in Chinese. So this. Uh, experience here I got is mostly teach me how to cover stories in English and it's more about the practice and experience of like video shooting yeah all right thank you uh, any other questions from uh, from the chat room is it is, is it necessary to learn Cantonese to communicate with the locals? Yeah, and where does that question come from? Bing Yu and Sarah both asking that same question. Um, well, we, we, dis we discussed language a little earlier. Uh, perhaps uh, they've, they've just tuned in. Um, you guys, do you want to field that question? How necessary is Cantonese here? Jack, you're a native Cantonese speaker. Um, how about the, neither of you speak Cantonese, right? Like for a little. Sisu, a little. <laughs> um, you know, there's this funny story. I asked this question to Kevin Seitz, who was the director before Matt was. And I asked him whether one should try to learn Cantonese before coming to the course, just like the person just asked. And his reply to me was, uh, don't even try. <laughs> and I was like, why a professor would say no to learning Cantonese or like doing something relating to education? So when I came here, finally I asked him again, why, why was he so, like why was he denying? So he said that, you know, it's not an easy language. And with the amount of work that the course requires, it's not simple to learn it in one day. So it's better to stick to your language maybe uh, improve your English throughout the time, and then later you can uh, start learning Cantonese, which I am planning to now. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a notoriously difficult language. Uh, I wouldn't discourage anyone from learning uh, really anything, studying anything, but Cantonese is, is uh, for non-Cantonese speakers, is, is known to be awfully difficult. Um, language study uh, is not a part of our program, nor is it a, a necessary component. Um, but the University of Hong Kong, being uh, a, a rich and diverse academic environment, does offer uh, uh, language courses that you can take. But time management is the thing. So uh, perhaps uh, after you've graduated or uh, s some way you can work it in. But uh, it, it would not be necessary 
to, uh, to study Cantonese or speak Cantonese before coming here to go to school. As I mentioned earlier, Hong Kong is a multilingual city. Uh, Cantonese, Mandarin, and English is an official language in Hong Kong. Uh, uh, everything is published in dual languages, so uh, not, not necessary. Um, other questions from my colleagues in the control room? Anybody uh, else chiming in? That's a terrific question. That's, a, that, that's terrific. Um, uh, uh, where is Amy, Amy's question coming from? Amy in Indonesia wants to know, how well prepared for the real world of journalism did you feel uh, 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 coming out of the program and, and starting uh, your employment or your, your internship? How, how well prepared did you feel? Uh, show you. I have to say, is the real job is more intense than the program here because you always will face something new every day, and your boss will always ask you, "So, what do we have new today?" So, I think about the daily schedule and then the production. I think you will get more used to it after you keep practicing, and your skills will be more like advanced. I think. Jack, how, how prepared for your internship do you feel? Well, I'll say that the master's program doesn't make you master's in journalism, but mm -hmm. you'll get a degree, uh, the master's of journalism. Um, journalism is pretty much learn on the job. You have to be exposed to the newsroom environment. You have to be exposed to new, real news stories. And the classroom just can't teach you much. But of course, the course has made me more prepared than I was before the course. So that's, yeah. And, and that's where your internship is valuable yeah. in exposing you exactly. to the, the real world. How about uh, starting your new job at Bloomberg? Now, you had uh, been working as a journalist previously, Supriya, uh, so you had some idea of what the real news world was like. Um, do you, did you feel um, prepared from the program to, to, to start at Bloomberg or uh, underprepared? I think uh, with all the skills that JMSC gives. Uh, so Bloomberg recruitment process, as everyone must be knowing already who wants to be a journalist, it's really intense. And it's something which I never experienced before in my life. So for that, I would say JMSC prepares you so much indirectly to take all the punches all throughout the year, to be well, well planned and to master all your skills, I would say it definitely prepares you well. And when you enter that job, you definitely know what you want to do. And like you already have your things planned in mind before. Like when you go to the office every day, it's not like someone will come and tell you, this is your work, this is what you have to do today. JMSC prepares you for some uh, real life journalism training where you already are aware of what kind of stories you want to do. And you are ready to take that punch and you want to just go and pitch and keep pitching. Excellent, excellent. Uh, and uh, Jason, um, those of you who are applying to the program will uh, become familiar with Jason Hoy. He's uh, the uh, program manager and he fields your emails and applications. He's in the control room uh, reading the questions that you're, you're posting. Um, Jason, do we have any, uh, anything else? Okay, one last question, then we'll, we'll wrap it up. Sarah in Shenzhen has a question. Uh, uh, Sarah in Shenzhen wants to know, uh, how did you know that you wanted to study journalism when you didn't study it as an undergraduate? Um, uh, I, I, w I would add to that, to uh, the more general question, what, what made you apply to our program? Why did you want to come here to study? Um, let's, let's go down the line. Start with Supriya. Why did I want to study journalism is because as a child, as a kid, I always dreamt of becoming the anchor I used to see on TV. So that's a very simple answer to that one. 
But why did I choose to come to JMSC? Uh, because Hong Kong is the financial hub and I was a business journalist before also. And I wanted to further my career in financial journalism. So I would say like Hong Kong was an easy choice to be from India, to be near home, but to also gain that international experience. And uh, considering all the faculty that we have here, I think this is Asia's uh, premier courses that one can take. And uh, as far as I know, no uh, university in India is providing the courses, the type of courses that we have here. So for me, it was an easy, easy choice to make. Jack, you, studied, you said you studied law as an undergraduate. What, what makes you want to pursue journalism? Well, uh, I what had makes a, you want to do it here? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had a good think about what I wanted to do in life. I mean, you leave formal education in your early 20s, you retire in your 60s. So between that, those 40 so, or so years, what do you want to do? How do you make your mark? How do you have, you know, make the biggest social impact possible? And I thought journalism is the way. Uh, it's about informing people, informing under-informed people to let them make better decisions about their lives, the societies around them. Uh, and I wanted to do this in JMSC because I like how the program is focused on journalism and journalism only. It's, it's a skill-based uh, program. It's not so much about, say, communication theory. It's not about how you know, social networks are formed. Etc. is about how you can put your skills and how you can train yourselves as a journalist when you come out of the program. Thank you, Jack. Uh, that, that is what we're all about. You've encapsulated that perfectly. Uh, Xiaoyu, now you, you did study uh, uh, media and, and mm -hmm. journalism as an undergraduate, but what made you want to continue your study and, and come here? I think um, because I study like covering the stories in Chinese, so definitely I want to try in English and also like more experience. But about journalism, I think here it's uh, it can make my daily work like really fresh because you always face the challenges every day, talk to different people, and also like um, some of the stories can literally like change some other people's life or really save some people. And here is a program, I checked the program before I joined, and then I checked the schedule, it's really intense, and then I checked the uh, in introduction of the courses, like they offer you the basic skills and basic theory, and, but also gives you a lot of like practice and like experience. So I think that's why I'm wanting to join here. Well, th th those are three great notes on, on, which, on which to conclude. Um, I want to thank Supriya and Jack and Xiaoyu for, for joining us. I want to thank uh, my colleagues who've helped put this production on. Roy Ching, Horace Lee, uh, uh, Li Chen, Jason Hoy, who I mentioned. Uh, Fun Li is in, in the control room somewhere. Uh, my partner in the production studio here, Kalak Ku, makes all of the gear run as the director of this. Uh, Ting Shi, one of our, our uh, in instructors, is uh, in the control room as well. Uh, did I miss anyone? All right, so uh, thank you to, uh, to the team for making this happen. But most importantly, thank you for tuning in. We look forward to receiving your application and we look forward to seeing you in September 2020.